Good morning, everyone. It's election day. Good morning. Good morning. So uh, today is November 3rd, and we are here today for a public meeting and hearing on Plainville Gaming and Redevelopment LLC's application for a license to hold or conduct a race meeting for 2021. Um, it is November 3rd, 10 a.m., and um, we are conducting this meeting virtually um, using um, remote technology to connect us all for this hearing under relief granted to us by Governor Baker's executive order, um, giving us relief from certain provisions of the open meeting law. So I'll call this um, hearing and meeting to order and turn it over to Dr. Lightbound, who will be really emceeing our, um, our hearing today. Commissioners, I think that um, today's uh, effort is, as uh, Commissioner Cameron say, is mostly a listening exercise, but we are permitted um, to ask questions. I know that we will be turning to this uh, matter again on Thursday as we consider the application for vote. So today is really a day for us to gain insights and input from the public and stakeholders so that we can make an informed decision on this application. Anything you want to add, commissioners? I see no, no, no. Okay, then we'll get started. Dr. Lightbound, thank you. Good morning, commissioners and Madam Chair. Good morning. So this year, the um, only application we got for racing, um, thoroughbred or harness racing, is the application from um, Plain Ridge Park Casino that we're going to be discussing today. And I'll turn it over to um, Steve O'Toole, Director of Racing for Plain Ridge. Um, he also has with him Chris Macrolein, Vice President of Racing for Penn National, and uh, Lisa McKinney, the Compliance Officer. They're also on the line if there's uh, specific questions. So um, with that, I'll turn it over to Steve O'Toole. Thank you, Alex. Um, so uh, the, uh, I'd like to thank the, the commissioners and uh, also the attendees, uh, the chiefs and the people from the town, uh, Jen Thompson, the uh, uh, town administrator for joining us this morning, as well as Chip, if he gets on the line at some point around here. Um, this is the property's 23rd uh, season that we'll be applying for. Actually, for me, it's the 21st application that I've uh, put together and submitted. Uh, 2020 was the seventh season for Penn National Gaming uh, as uh, plain, as Plainville uh, Gaming and Redevelopment. Uh, the 2021 application is the eighth application for, uh, for this property. Uh, before I get into the, the nuts and bolts of the application pending before you, I'd just like to touch back on, the, on this season, the 2020. Uh, which has been uh, arduous to say the least. Uh, we have, we're scheduled to do about 68 days of the 110 days that we did last year. Um, we have 11 days left and we have been fairly successful in carrying out uh, the, do a little math here, the 57 days so far um, uh, with under the uh, COVID protocols that uh, we went over with the commission back uh, when we opened in July. <clears throat> so uh, we, we are scheduled to, to pay out about six and a half million dollars in purses, in overnight purses. The, uh, the breeders, the standard bread uh, breeders have just finished their mass bread uh, series. And that series, uh, they awarded uh, $1.3 million in purses to the, uh, to the, to the sire stakes. And that's down from 1.8 million um, last year, so not really a bad hit for considering that the uh, that the, uh, the that the revenue generators uh, uh, were shut down for three months. Um, I'd really like to commend my staff and uh, Dr. Lightbound staff for uh, really going above and beyond. We did suffer, <clears throat> and I'm not sure if Alex suffered any casualties to her staff, but we did suffer some uh, casualties to our staff. Uh, people that uh, felt comfortable coming back to work. So uh, we had a, uh, we did have a, a, a bit of a chore filling a lot of spots. A lot of people put on uh, many different hats. And I really want to commend my staff because it's not this, there's one person on my staff that is able to work from home. And he very rarely took that opportunity to. Uh, to work from home because a lot of times people are in person. 
Um, my staff, both the on, on the front side, on the customer facing side, as well as the horseman side, um, they they really went above and beyond, and uh, they they deal with the public each and every day, and uh, they've done a great job, and they've taken on responsibilities that that initially weren't theirs, but in order to uh, you know uh, to to deal with the situations both in the simulcasting area as well as the horse racing areas. Uh, they've done a fantastic job, and with Alex's, uh, I had a conversation through a text message with Alex last week, but she was uh, concerned that, you know, with the spike in numbers that we've seen, that maybe uh, it was time to reinforce some of the values that we've been able to operate under, and uh, I know she did that with her staff, and I thought that was a great idea, and I did that with my staff as well. So um, we're looking forward to finishing the season on a positive note and not having any uh, interruptions or any uh, uh, or any problems. Uh, we, we, it's gone well so far. We are moving into the colder weather and things are moving inside, so we need to be a little bit more diligent than, than uh, we have been uh, just reinforcing everything as uh, things tighten down. People are you know cuddling to get a little bit warmer in the month of November, but uh, we, we're, we're optimistic that things are going to go well. Uh, so with that being said, uh, I'd like to thank you for allowing me to present the application for uh, uh, 2021. Um, I've, I've submitted a completed application, $125,000 bond continuation certificate, the $2,100 uh, fee, as well as 16 exhibits. And I feel that those exhibits will, uh, We'll, we'll, you'll, you'll see with those exhibits that we will meet the seven criteria for a licensure uh, to hold a racing meeting uh, in Massachusetts. And that is the, fin the financial ability to operate a racetrack, the maximization of state revenues, the suitability of the racing facility for operation at the time of year for which the dates are granted, the accommodation of large groups uh, of spectators in a safe and convenient environment. Uh, according to the public racing competition that is honestly managed and, uh, and of good quality, having the proper physical facilities for racing meetings and the necessity to accord fair treatment to the economic interest and investments of those who in good faith have provided and maintained the facilities. Uh, Plainville Gaming and Redevelopment, the parent company, Penn National, uh, is a leader in the gaming and racing industry. Uh, 13 racing facilities in nine different jurisdictions and also Penn operates three off-track wagering facilities in two different states, as well as uh, the national uh, ATW account deposit wagering uh, platform, Hollywood Races. Uh, it's obvious that I have great support from the corporate racing team that's uh, headed up by uh, Chris McElwain, Vice President of Racing Operations at, at Penn. <clears throat> I'd just like to take some time to highlight some points in Exhibit 25 as to why this application is beneficial to the public and to the Commonwealth and to the applicant. Uh, Penn National takes pride in uh, creating a, a racing atmosphere that, that the public enjoys, that's safe for the horsemen, and our, our facility is definitely uh, well-maintained and provides a convenient and safe atmosphere for our customers and our horsemen, uh, even, in this, even in these most difficult times. Uh, we also offer, you know, through International Sound and some other uh, technology, we offer our, our racing officials the latest technology to carry out their duties uh, to maintain and ensure that the racing is of high quality and is honestly managed. Uh, under a normal year, as I explained, we would have uh, conducted last year 110 racing days. That is that pretty well fills the schedule that we can uh, that we can do here safely uh, between the months of April and November. Uh, as I said, this year uh, we're, we're scheduled to do the 68 because of the interruption and uh, payout purse is about six and a half million dollars. Um, the track is uh, has has been very good all, all year. Uh, the, the, the sire stakes, uh, the mass bred races, saw a lot of their records fall. Um, we had a world record set in the Spirit of Mass Trot, 
as well as uh, as well as a lot of other records uh, this year. And the, the, the track has been very good. And we have had absolutely, there was one incident. Uh, it was not a catastrophic breakdown. We had one incident. Uh, it was actually before the race started where a couple of horses, when they were turning, bumped and one of the jockeys fell off, or one of the drivers fell off and uh, broke a couple of ribs. But there, was, there hasn't been any accidents this year from the start to the finish of the race. Um, so with, with that being said, with 110 days, we, we have applied for over a 33 week schedule, uh, racing three days a week, Monday, uh, Thursday, Friday, and some four day weeks, which include Sunday uh, towards the end of, of the year. Um, we believe that the economic generator that uh, we provide here at Plain Ridge uh, benefits the Commonwealth as well as the horsemen. Um, the schedule is consistent with the past seasons that we've applied for, and it's suited for the time of year that we've applied for. Uh, so we believe that there's sufficient evidence uh, provided in the application. And in my short testimony, I think I've kept it fairly short, and some of the testimony that you'll hear from uh, others, uh, that granting these dates benefit our horsemen and the public, and in return provide for the fair treatment and economic interests of Plainville gaming and redevelopment. Uh, I thank you again for the opportunity to present another application. I don't know how many more I have left in me, uh, but uh, uh, I can answer any questions you might have uh, as far as uh, as far as the racing this year or anticipated next year. Um, I'd be glad to answer anything that you have. Questions at this stage, or should we move on to the next speaker? Let's okay, if up. the um, commissioners are okay with it, I'll go ahead and take um, Chief James uh, Alfred, the chief of the Plainville Police, next so he can get back to his duties if he needs to. Um, chief Alfred? Good morning. Good morning. Madam Chairman, um, from the police perspective, I'm happy to report that um, you know, we maintain a very uh, professional relationship uh, with Plain Ridge and um, Penn National Management. They do a great job. Uh, communications are always open. Uh, Crime-wise, uh, there's little to it. It's a well-run facility, and we have very, very few minor incidents there. Um, so, um, really, uh, I would call it a model facility, actually. Um, they, do a, they do a great job there. So, uh, from the police perspective, we have little to report uh, when it comes to any type of uh, criminal activity uh, there at Plain Ridge. So, um, if you have any questions for me, I'd be more than willing to um, ask them. I had a quick question for Chief Alfred. First of all, good to see you, Chief. See you. And um, I, I just, first of all, I just wanted to thank you for, um, for in a very trying year, working so hard, uh, the men and women of your department, along with, um, you know, our state police members who keep both the casino and the racetrack safe and the patrons safe every single day. And I know this has been a trying year um, for the department. And um, again, my thanks. And you have given us, um, uh, we've learned to have great faith over the years in uh, the collaborative uh, interaction at, at the casino and the racetrack, and uh, it's just much appreciated, and uh, you frankly made our jobs easier because of the good work of uh, your department. So I want to thank you um, in, in particular with this uh, trying year. Well, thank you, Commissioner, and, and I should mention we do have a great working relationship. Um, with the state police who are on site every day with us, uh, or us with them, um, and we work well together. Uh, as I mentioned in a previous hearing, um, uh, I think it's a model for success. Uh, I think it has been, and um, they have been uh, continued to be. And, uh, and, uh, and, and thank you, by the way, uh, Commissioner, for your support as well through the years and guidance uh, with the background that you have coming from, you know, the state police in New Jersey, as well as the game down there. So um, it's been a great team effort uh, with all involved. And uh, thank you very much for your support. Thank you. 
Quest questions for uh, comments for Chief Al <clears throat> Alfred. Chief, we just all, um, again, I echo Commissioner Cameron's thanks and, and our gratitude. Uh, we know that you have an important job to do today to protect the residents um, of Plainville's right to vote. Yes, so busy we day. don't want to, <laughs> pardon me? It's a very busy day. Um, it's a busy day and the most critical day today. Um, every day your yeah. job is critical, but we know that um, you're in need. So unless there's particular questions, we'll release you. But we do know that you are a great partner for um, <clears throat> Director O'Toole and his team and for Dr. Lightbound. So we appreciate your report today and input. Good luck today. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Chairman. Dr. Lightbound. Okay, so um, the next person we'll take is Chief Justin Alexander, the uh, Chief of the Plainville Fire Department. Chief Hi. Alexander. Hi, Dr. Lightbound, it's Jennifer Thompson, the Town Administrator and Madam Chair, if you wouldn't mind. Um, as you know, we're still a very small town and um, Chief Alexander got called away for an emergency call. So um, I'm happy to speak on his behalf or I can just do it all in my comments if you'd like. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer Thompson was gonna be our next speaker, the <laughs> town administrator for Plainville. So I'll uh, turn it over to her now. Thank you, Jennifer. Th thank you. Um, so for, first of all, you've, you've all heard me. Uh, thank you, Dr. Leitbound and, and thank you to the commissioners for having us. Um, you're probably sick of hearing from me the last um, month and a half about how wonderful our relationship is with, with Plain Ridge and Penn National, but um, so I'll, I'll try to keep it brief. But, you know, we have that same positive, wonderful relationship when it comes to racing. And um, I think you all know the history of Plainville and how deeply the racing industry um, is in Plainville and how much it meant to us. Uh, to, to keep racing alive and, and you know we just had a wonderful success with Penn National. As you know our relationship with um, Plain Ridge and Penn has been incredibly positive since since they opened. Um, we have a wonderful public-private partnership. They are our largest taxpayer in town um, but most importantly as you've heard me um, speak to the last few months is their response to the town um, especially in um, COVID and during a pandemic and how excellent they've been to work with. And that definitely falls, um, is true on the racing side as well. So every precaution that we see, they work very cl closely with our Board of Health and obviously very closely with our, our public safety professionals um, has been top notch. And uh, they're in constant communication. And as you heard uh, Mr. O'Toole speak to um, during his presentation, very little incidents. They work very well with our fire and EMS to ensure the safety of the employees um, and the jockeys and the, and the horses and the public. And they've done a wonderful job. So um, in terms of Chief Alexander's testimony today, uh, I think he would echo those comments. He works very closely with everyone at Penn National and especially on the racing side when it comes to being prepared for any sort of an EMS emergency that might occur. They are very easy to work with. They're very responsive and very responsible. So the town, of course, fully supports this application and we thank you for your time and certainly here to answer any questions that you might have. Questions? Yeah, again, Madam Chair, I do not have a question, but I just, again, want to express my gratitude. Um, Administrator Thompson, you know, what a wise decision. I know you were part of the tail end of that to use that money so wisely for that beautiful town hall and public safety building um, and all the work you do behind the scenes to make this uh, very successful uh, endeavor here in the Commonwealth. And please uh, give uh, our thanks to uh, Chief Alexander too. I, he has been an integral partner in how well um, and how safe this um, racing season in a, in, a, in a year like this has been, um, and as well as the casino. So please pass on our thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck to you today too. We know it's busy, busy day for every municipal um, leader. So thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Dr. Lightbound. So our next uh, speaker is Raymond Campbell. He's the president of the Standard Bread Owners of Massachusetts. As you know, they're the um, designated representative of the Massachusetts uh, harness breeders. Um, Chip, Mr. Campbell. 
Hi, good morning. Thank you, Dr. Lightbaum, and thank you to the commissioners for the opportunity to speak regarding the Plain Merge Park application for 2021. Um, the Standard Bread Owners Group, I'm sure as you, you folks are well aware, we go in front of you every year to be appointed the group to represent the breeders and also to provide for the sire stake races in Massachusetts. Uh, the, the breeding program provides for eligible horses to race in the Massachusetts sire stake races. The 2020 racing season was concluded a little over a week ago on 1026. It was another successful year with more participation, more competition, and an increased talent level. The Plain Ridge Park staff was once again very important in the smooth running and continued success of the program. The things that they do behind the scenes very willingly um, and with great flexibility to make the program go off um, really quite efficiently is, is there to be commended. It, it's a terrific relationship. They've also offered this year uh, restricted races for young mass bred horses uh, in the overnight races, which will, which has increased opportunities for those horses. And again, we, will lead to, and is leading to more interest and more value for the mass bred horses. That they have, the Plain Ridge Park staff has been a very willing partner in helping our organization, which has continued to lead us into more growth and, um, and again, interest in the program, which is key at, at this point. The, the interest continues to expand uh, way beyond Massachusetts. Uh, by them allowing for other horses to, or for mass bred horses to have more opportunities, they are really setting the groundwork for a, a very strong future. Uh, without these, the cooperation of Plain Ridge Park and, and least of all, a, a place to race, um, we wouldn't be afforded that opportunity. The breeding program wouldn't go and all the things that you've, you've, we've spoken of in the past that are, are positive for the state of Massachusetts with the, the breeding program. So it, it, it's very, uh, um, very important just to, to touch on that it's a, a team effort uh, we work very closely with management. Uh, we're very appreciative of that, and I, I think the uh, the members and and people in all people involved would would agree with that. And and thank you for the opportunity again to to speak today on in favor of uh, Plain Ridge Park. Thank you. Questions, commissioners, comments. Okay, thank. Thank you, um, Mr. Campbell. Thank you very much for calling in. Dr. Lightbound. Surely. Uh, that concludes the um, people who have signed up to speak. I don't know um, if you want to make further comments or go from there, but that completes the people that signed up. Um, uh, and, and you've raised a good point. We did invite um, folks, if they didn't sign up, if they wanted to offer public input today, it's a little tricky for us to navigate who might um, wish to speak if they are joining. Shar, I don't know if, if um, we can look to see if there's any waving of hands. I don't see anything um, or any one. We have a couple of phone calls who would have to unmute by pressing star six if they chose to make a comment. I don't think we're hearing anyone. Shara, do you see anyone that I might be missing? Oh, you're on mute, sorry. Sorry, my space bar didn't work. Uh, nope, you haven't missed anybody. Okay. Then uh, if there's no further input. Uh, Alex, how would you like to proceed? Are we uh, set to conclude today or do we need to do any other wrap up business? Um, I believe that's all we have for today. So um, as long as it's okay to end the meeting at this point, we could. Okay. Um, yeah. If so God before has we any suggestions. Yeah. Okay, great. And before we close, we'll um, I'll go through for each commissioner to see if they have any comments or questions. Commissioner Zuniga. 
Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. I actually had a, um, a comment and, and, and a question. Perhaps we, uh, Steve can, can speak a little bit more about uh, the economics of, of, um, of this uh, coming year. Um, but let me start by saying that um, I think he has many racing seasons ahead of him. Don't, uh, don't let the, you know, the white hair fool you um, into, and the experience into, um, into suggesting that, um, that he's close to the finish line there. Um, but, uh, but Steve, if you look back a little bit at uh, the recent years since he awarded the casino license, there was a clear trend up in terms of field size, in terms of racing days, we all know about that, and of course, uh, purses, as well as uh, the breeding programs. And um, perhaps uh, if you could kind of speak high level as to, you know, the next year, uh, of course, with a caveat, with a very large caveat of what this, um, you know, pandemic uh, might, might do. We already know it did a little bit of um, diminished purses because um, the casinos were closed for at least, uh, you know, the period that they were closed. Um, you know, from March, mid-March to uh, early July. And so that has a direct uh, effect in the funding of purses, um, not entirely, but just partially. So if you could speak a little bit about uh, in that trend, if you will, um, are we holding steady in terms of economics? Will we see a, a dip that could be um, perhaps, um, you know, corrected? You spoke about the number of days, but what about other things like Deal size, breeding, um, you know, purse wagering, etc. So it's a multi-pronged um, uh, question with a lot of different answers and a, diff a lot of different variables. But it's uh, for me, it's easy to explain. Um, I'm not sure if the ears that are hearing me are easy to decipher what I'm saying. But uh, the field size, uh, the, the question on field size is uh, that has not been an issue this year. And, what, and the reason that it hasn't been an issue this year is because our purses have been very well, uh, have been very good. Uh, we're averaging, 90, uh, awarding $95,000 on average of racing day. And so there was a lot of interest, uh, a lot of shippers, a lot of new, new people trying to uh, race with us. Uh, so we have, uh, as Chip Campbell has said, we've restricted some races to Massachusetts bred horses. We've also uh, restricted some races to Massachusetts owned horses. And we have also given Massachusetts owned horses and Massachusetts trained horses preference to get in before we take any other horses that come in from the outside. Trainers that haven't been here before, horses that haven't been here before. So <clears throat> the field size has flushed out very well because when we get down to that preference level, then we just fill in with uh, outsiders, if you will, to fill out the cards. So the, the um, so the field size has been very good. The competition has been very good, as Chip pointed out in the sire stake races. It's been excellent, uh, and and in our overnights, it's been excellent as well. Uh, the pandemic has you know hit racing just like it's hit uh, every other business. I think it's hit racing a little bit more than it has hit the uh, casino industry. Um, our numbers are our numbers at least here at, at Plain Ridge are down a little bit more than we'd like to see them. They're not at the same. Uh, they haven't taken the same hit as the casino has. It's taken a little bit more of a hit. Uh, simulcasting as well as our live racing. Uh, the export, which is our signal going out to other venues, has been okay. It hasn't been over the top. Uh, we were hoping that that would be something that would um, increase uh, more than it has. So um, pandemic definitely has had an effect on, on, on racing and the racing customers. Um, our customers, you know, we're not seeing the people come to the track uh, like they used to. Um, we are seeing a lot of people coming and watching from the grass area uh, and, you know, not being, not coming into the building. Um, so that means that they're probably not wagering. So it's very difficult. You know, the interest level is still there, but uh, the wagering is, is definitely off. Um, that being said, uh, I think we've done, uh, you know, a pretty good job at getting the, uh, you know, for sick, for, uh, for the days that we've raced, uh, getting a lot of uh, purse money out into the uh, out into the hands of the horsemen and, and the shippers that come in, as well as the local 
uh, people that come in, in in order to spend their money locally and, 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 and do things. There's not as many opportunities with restaurants and things like that, but there still is all the ancillary benefits that comes along with the racing and the activity that go, goes on here. I, I think uh, you know, last year, I think I reported that uh, our purse account was right around 10 million for 110 days. So for 68 days, I think it's very, uh, that's on a very level uh, keel as far as the amount of, uh, of uh, racing that we've done, that the six, six and a half million dollars with the 68 days is right in line with what we've, what we've done uh, over the past. And we went into this season with a little bit of a uh, carryover in the purse account, which was a good thing. Um, and, you know, we're in flux now, you know, with new restrictions of uh, hours of operation and things like that. Uh, so the racing revenues have dropped. The uh, resource development fund monies have dropped. The live handle has, has dropped. So um, all those things go into the overall purse account. And uh, so, for, so, so for us to maintain what we've maintained and award what we've awarded, I think that uh, that's pretty even uh, in, in, you know, considering where we were last year. Now going forward, I'm not really sure, you know, obviously I'm not really sure where we're, where we're gonna be, but with those adjustments, um, even if uh, we take a hit in, in the purses, uh, we have been awarding a very nice purse for the caliber of horses and the caliber of investments that the owners and trainers have put into these uh, animals. Uh, I think it's well rewarding, and even if it if we have to take a little bit of a hit in 2021, I still think that the economic generator will be uh, sufficient and and will be you know comparable to what we have. And we do a very you know my race secretary does a very good job. I, I like to say we do, but my race secretary does a very good job at. at and keeping that flow very even uh, with very subtle changes to classes, very subtle changes to uh, to purses, to the purse structure. Um, I think that I, if you saw our racing last year in the purses and the races, and you saw our racing this year, not knowing that there was a pandemic going on, that there was less days or whatever, you would see very little uh, sway in the purses awarded and what the trainers are, are earning per race, not so much overall for the season, but per their efforts into each each race. I, I, I think I covered I think I covered all all, all the facets of your question. I I think so very well by the way and um, thank you much. Other questions for Steve. I think that um, <clears throat> I'll just highlight we were um, we were all together for with the plane bill in Plain Ridge Park Casino community for the public hearing on the relicensure of um, PPC. And I think that my fellow commissioners and I would all agree that we were struck by the number of folks who, who spoke in general on behalf of PPC, but many who commented on horse racing and the impact of the horse racing community and the breeding community. We had extensive testimony that day, and that wasn't that long ago. So the fact that today we haven't heard as much from the, the actual um, community members and the, that community um, is perhaps a reflection that we did just hear extensively from them. And it was a love fest, wasn't it? Um, it, it was very, very positive input. And it was, um, for me, uh, a, a little bit of an awakening around about the breeding uh, community and the fact that the Plainville community is is surrounded by um, breeders. I had mistakenly thought most of that was further west in the state. So um, I'm just going to be reminded of that positive input as well as today's positive input as we reflect um, on the, the application for this this Thursday's. Um, uh, discussion and vote. Um, Dr. Lightbound, will um, Steve, will you be available um, on Thursday as well? Should the commissioners have any additional questions? I will. Okay, excellent. So um, the, the, the good news is that we have had considerable input through this meeting today, consistent with the um, input we got. Gosh, it was just a, a month ago or so, right? So. 
Any further comments? Commissioner Stebbins, are you all set? Okay. Commissioner all set, Brian. Great. Commissioner O'Brien, all set? I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Cameron. All set. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Seneca. Thank you very much, everybody. Good. All right. Uh, well done, Dr. Hey. Lightbound, as always. Come on. Steve. I have one. I have one question for uh, Commissioner Stebbins. Is three hundred and sixty-two the longest home run that you hit? Is that what that three sixty-two stands for? Uh, no, it's uh, <laughs> it's a it's it's a piece of an outfield wall. If there was three point six two feet, maybe. But if uh, <laughs> thanks for noticing, Steve. <laughs> We'll get that backstory another time, apparently, okay. Steve. <laughs> well, we'll lead with that on Thursday. How yeah. about that, right? <sighs> okay. All right. Well, thank you to everybody who contributed today. Um, and again, good luck to our, our, um, our the leaders in the municipal um, public safety and uh, municipal offices today on this very big day in the, the week ahead. Thank you, Jennifer, so much. All right, I guess then I'll need a, a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. Commissioner Stebbins. Aye. And I vote yes, and thank you, Shara, and Dr. Lightbound for uh, organizing this meeting. Everybody have a good day. Thank you so much. Go vote. Thank you. Thank you.